there are two common situations that really link work and energy. Uh, the two situations include an object on a flat surface moving and also an object, let's say that's on the ground and is moving upward. In this, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about both of those and how we link work and energy. Right. So let's look at the first one. We have an object of mass m that's going to slide along a surface. The velocity of mass m, let's say, is 5.0 meters per second in the positive direction. Now, at some point in time, and that's none of our concern right now, mass m is found to the right with a velocity of 15 meters per second. How much work was put into that box, okay, or that object, that mass? I guess before we go any further, we could give the, the mass um, some amount here, and let's say 2.0 kilograms. So the question is, how much work was put into the box? First, I want to ask you, what is energy due to motion called? Okay, We have two major types of mechanical energy. The first one is energy due to motion, and that's kinetic energy, okay, where the energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. So if you look at this situation, we have two kinetic energies. The first one here, where the velocity is equal to 5 meters per second. So we can find a kinetic energy here on the left. Also, we have a, a final velocity of positive 15 meters per second. And so we have a kinetic energy there. Those two kinetic energies are going to be different. Of course, the final velocity is going to provide more energy at the end. So how does work relate to this? We'll get there. So the initial kinetic energy, 1 half the mass times the velocity squared, 5.0 meters per second squared. And the final is going to be 1 half the mass, 2.0 kilograms, times 15.0 meters per second squared. So now you have to do those calculations. Our first one is fairly simple if you think about it. 1 half of 2 is 1, and 1 times 5 squared would be 25. So the kinetic energy initially is 25 joules. And we get joules from kilograms here meter squared per second squared. Right. And that's a newton meter, which is one joule. Okay? And we have 25 joules. And the kinetic energy final is basically turns out to be 15 squared, because once again, 1 half of 2 is 1. 15 squared is 225. If we go by significant digits, we have two significant digits, so 225 would become 230 joules. So how much work was done on the box, on the mass? If I were to just give this problem to you and say, well, the, the, the kinetic energy at the beginning is 25 and, and the final kinetic energy is uh, 230, most people would just subtract them just because it seems like the logical thing to do if you're going to solve for something or anything. Okay? And actually, that is what happens here. So the work put into the box or gained by the box is the amount of energy gained by the object, Okay, the box. Right. So that would be 230 joules minus 
25 joules. And you'll notice that actually turns out to be a positive value, and that, and that positive value is fairly significant. Right? If I subtract these, I would get 205. Um, if I want to look at the significant digits, we would go with 210 joules. Okay. So what does the positive mean? Well, if you have positive work done, that means the velocity is going to increase, at least when we're talking about kinetic energy. If there's negative work done, it means the velocity is going to decrease. So maybe you're in your car and you, and you hit the brake to slow down. That would provide negative work, okay, which means you have a decrease in velocity. Okay, a decrease in kinetic energy. All right. So let's make a statement here about the kinetic energy and work, an equation. We will say that the work, and in textbooks sometimes they like to call it the net work, N-E-T, is simply the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And that's an important equation. We call that the work energy theorem. Okay. So that's one situation. The second situation we have, I already mentioned, is an object moving vertically. Okay versus horizontally. Okay, the second, the second situation I already talked about, or already showed you, is an object basically that is a certain height above the ground and finishes below where it started. Now you could also have an object that starts at the ground and is lifted up, um, and that's fine. But typically, we like to talk about roller coasters or dropping boxes or dropping masses. And those objects always start above where they finish. Right. Now, if I look at this, let's give it the same mass of 2.0 kilograms. Let's give it a height of 3.0 meters. Okay. Sometimes people refer to the height as y. Okay, because in physics that's the y direction, and that's fine, but, t but uh, a lot of students like to just refer to it as h, or the height. So there's a second type of mechanical energy um, besides uh, kinetic energy, and that is the potential energy. And the potential energy is equal to the mass times the gravity times the height. And so if you look at this, I sort of have two potential energies. I have a potential energy here, and we could go ahead and fill in the numbers now. We'll call that the initial 2.0 kilograms times 9.80 meters per second squared times the height, which is 3. And when I do that calculation, I believe I get 59. Let me check here. Yep, 59, 58.8. Significant digits, we'd have 59. And at the bottom, we'd have a potential energy of 2.0 kilograms. And you might find this absolutely ridiculous that I'm doing this, but that's OK. And what's my height? It's 0 meters. OK? So the potential energy at the bottom would be 0 joules. So if I were to ask you with this situation, how much work was done on this mass? Well, I think it's pretty obvious it'd be equal to the change in energy again, which would be 59 joules minus 0 joules. And in the end, that's 59 joules. So our equation that deals in the y direction, we like to call WG. G stands for gravity. Okay. And potential energy always has gravity in it because there's height involved. And it's the initial potential energy minus the final potential energy. Now, instead of going into the, the reasons why we really uh, flip the I and the F and derivations and whatever, um, 
I like to look at it as normally we start with objects that are above the ground and they fall towards the ground. Okay? So it makes sense to put the initial energy first because that would give us a positive value. If the initial is above the final, it's a positive value when it goes down. And that's commonly what objects do. It, it, would, it would look odd to us if we were to call that negative work being done. Okay. And you will find that equation in your book. I don't think these equations are, are, are worth memorizing. I think if you understand the link um, between work and energy, you would understand that however much energy is put into an object is how much work is done on the object. And if you know that, you should know to find the work at the beginning, the work at the end, subtract them. I'm sorry, let me say that one more time. The energy at the beginning, the energy at the end, subtract them, and that's your work done. I'm going to give a little bit of a different situation here, last one. And really, it's, it's no different than anything we've done here. I just want to talk about objects that start above the ground. Ooh, that's a really bad line there. So let's say an object that starts here and then finishes before it hits the ground. Let's say this is 1.0 meters, and let's say that this is 3.0 meters. I'm not going to put do, do all the calculations and stuff. I just I just want to talk a little something called reference points. Okay, so my question here is, where is the ground? Seems like a ridiculous question, you know. Here's the ground, right here, right here. Why does that have to be the ground? I like to call the ground wherever the object stops. And if I talk about it stopping one meter above the ground, then the easiest situation to do is to call this zero. All right? And if that's zero, all we have to do is change the height of the initial drop. And so what would that be? Of course, it would be 3.0 meters minus 1.0 meters, which would be 2.0 meters. Now, why is that nice? Well, we have to solve for the potential energy at the top then. And what's your potential energy at the bottom? Pen's going a little crazy here. The potential energy at the bottom is just 0, so we don't really need to worry about that. So the work done would simply be equal to the potential energy at the top. So the thing you have to realize, like with other problems that we had, you're allowed to kind of change the problem to make it easier for you. And in this case, by raising the ground up to where the pot package actually stops, the box, the, the object, the mass, makes it easier because the potential energy there is zero. So that's the end of this video. In the next video, I'm going to actually lump together the potential and the kinetic energies, and we're going to look at um, a problem that I'll never forget uh, from one of my first college tests.